Hey, Dominic Steele. Good morning. It is Friday morning, the 19th of July, John chapter 5 today. Looking forward to seeing you at Village Church for Romans 12 this um, Sunday morning, Sunday evening. And then uh, Introducing God kicks off on uh, Wednesday night. And do be thinking, praying about friends to bring along. Um, now, John chapter 5, verse 16, we're going to jump in. Um, we've been heading through John's Gospel um, and tension, high-level tension. Um, the carpenter's son from Galilee, amazing he's done the um <coughs> amazing he's done the uh water into wine in john 2 he, he he got angry at the temple and now what is he doing well look at verse 16 of john 5 because jesus was doing these things on the sabbath what's he doing on the sabbath well answer is he healed a guy and um the scene is that Jesus has got to the temple in Jerusalem and Jesus has just healed a man in that temple and it's a big deal. Jesus has kind of done a U-turn with double yellow over double yellow lines in his car directly in front of a police car. All the Jewish leaders are there at the temple. Jesus has, I mean, he's done this amazing thing, heal a man, but he's directly on face value, broken their laws, the law of having complete rest on the Sabbath. And so the Jews persecuted him jesus gives his explanation his defense and it's um very unusual it's uh, not a line of defense that he uses at other places in the gospels when he gets into sabbath controversies he says to them in verse 17 my father is always at work to this very day and i too am working now jesus's argument dad's at work i must be at work god the father was at work on the sabbath the jewish rabbis agreed that God worked on the Sabbath because otherwise who keeps the universe running while God rests? Who answers prayers while God rests? But God had commanded, even though he keep going, that his people have a rest day, a Sabbath day. And it was very important to the Jewish people that they do this. So important that it is hard for us in our 24 hour society where I want the shops to be open on my way home from church so that I can go to the shops when I want. It's hard for me to get my mind around what a Sabbath observing society would have been like. But they were very serious about remembering the rescue from slavery in Egypt and they took every seventh day off to do it. But the emphasis is, in that society on keeping the Sabbath, well, it had got to nitpicking legalism about strict Sabbath observance and people weren't able to do anything on the Sabbath and Jesus, when he'd gone to the temple, had chosen to heal a man, shown compassion and love and generosity and healed and now is under fire and his statement is, my father's always at work to this very day. I too am working. But the implication is, as God is above the Sabbath, so I am above the Sabbath, so I am equal with God. And that was a red rag to the bull. Because they understood what he was saying, sentence 18, for this reason. The Jews tried all the harder to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. Well, what are the implications of that for us? Well, um, if Jesus is equal to God, then the Mormon church, the Latter-day Saints people are wrong. For they see Jesus as less than the father. And the Christadelphian church is wrong because they see Jesus as less than the father. And the Jehovah's Witness people are wrong because they see Jesus as less than the father. All those organizations teach somehow that Jesus is less than God. And Jesus here makes himself equal with God. But then there are problems on the other side as well. Um, implications for within the Christian umbrella. What does it mean for Jesus to say he's equal with God? Does Jesus submit to his father? Can you have two equal people and one submit to the other? And actually, these words from Jesus have been at the center of controversy and gender debates in the church. And it's, it's not that Jesus is addressing gender roles. He's not. He's talking about role relationship within the Trinity. But because the Bible teaches that marriage is a relationship between two equal people, Christian people have rightly looked to the relationships in the Trinity as a template for understanding how the relationship within the husband-wife uh, relationship of two equal people should operate. And so, very significant, the implications of what's coming out of here in verses 16, 17, 18 of John chapter 5. So, we'll pick up on those things next week on Daily Bible Time. Let me lead in prayer. 
Heavenly Father, thank you that we see Jesus revealed here as equal with his Father. And help us to understand what that means um, on different sides of this controversy. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us on Daily Bible Time today. God bless.